One of the biggest mistakes that I see short form creators making is not showing screen recordings or visual assets in the right way in their videos, as well as just timing and positioning not being quite right. And so in this video, I'm gonna show exactly how I record my own screen recordings and then put them into my video. And then how I do my own animations to make it really flow nicely so you can start implementing some of these practical editing tips straight away. And so before I actually go into breaking down this video, I'm gonna just talk about how the idea came about for this, because it's performing really well on socials. So originally I actually made a video for SanDisk where I use Kling AI to create these transitions and they look good. But then a couple of weeks later, Higgsfield released their own sort of VFX animations and I created this Venom sort of transition and this blew up on socials, did really well for me. And then I started experimenting with the SanDisk products within Higgsfield and they looked really cool. And the thing is, the problem with my original SanDisk video and why it didn't perform as well is because I had to do a section in it where I kind of covered some of the products and it felt a bit addy. And so I thought, why don't I just take that concept uh, of the Sandis video that did actually perform quite well for an ad, take the more visual appealing animations of Higgsfield and just combine them into a new video with both concepts and just see how that would do. And it turns out to be doing quite well, which I kind of anticipated. And so I'm just gonna break down, you know, that video itself and just go into the more specific details. So firstly, I'm gonna just talk about the actual intro and visual hook, cause it's just super important. I just made all of these really cool transitions in a matter of minutes and I'm going to show you how to do it. So when I first started playing around with the VFX transition, I was like, I first did this blue one and I was like, that looks cool. Uh, and then I did this one and I was like, well, I, I know this will grab attention. And so I was really keen to make this video because I've spoken about this before, the more visually stimulating and sort of wow factor that you can have in your visual hook, the more likely you are for people to watch the video. I then actually coupled this with sound effects, which I think really added to the video. And I'm just gonna play it without the sound effects, just so that you can see the impact that the sound effects had. I just made all of these really cool transitions in a matter of minutes, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So that's without the sound effects, and then this is with the sound effects, obviously. Made all of these really cool transitions in a matter of minutes, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Huge difference there. I'm not gonna go into the specifics about the sound effects, because I am gonna be making a video in a couple of weeks' time talking about how you use different sound effects in your video to elevate it, so make sure you watch out for that. And then now moving on to the actual screen recording itself. As you can see here, this is really nicely formatted here in terms of like the composition of the website in the nine by 16 ratio. And the way that I achieve this is by using a, a second monitor that's, that's in a uh, sort of turned around in a vertical. And I'm just gonna show you it by turning on my other camera just so that you can see. And so as you can see, what happens here is when you put it on a vertical format, which is the nine by 16 ratio, it just resizes the website perfectly so that when I then put it into my editing software, I don't have to faff around with it. Because the problem is, is if you actually just do it on like a horizontal monitor like this, this becomes such a nightmare to basically zoom across. Like if I wanna zoom from up here to all the way down here, it becomes really difficult. And so if you don't actually own a vertical monitor, what you can do is just resize it like this. And that there will be roughly a nine by 16 ratio. And then you can just record that. And what I use for recording is OBS. It's gonna look a bit strange here because I'm recording it on it. This is like a streaming software, but all I essentially do is I can basically choose uh, which screen uh, to uh, record. I You go into the settings and set that up. And then now I just hit record and it will just record what's on my screen. And you can do all sorts with this software. Don't let it sort of alarm you with how much stuff is going on. You can watch a YouTube video on how to get the settings set up, but this is what I use for all of my screen recordings. You can record in 4K, have a really high quality output, and that's how I um, get like a high uh, level of clarity on the text. And then also just uh, one final tip here on, on the screen recording here. I use this uh, Chrome extension called Auto Scroll. And what this allows me to do is instead of me sort of manually sort of scrolling through the website or using my scroll wheel, because like I want to sort of just show a really smooth um, sort of flow of maybe all of these visuals. I use this Chrome extension where I just uh, press my middle scroll wheel and it creates this 
really nice smooth flow by just me dragging the mouse down. And if I wanna speed it up, I just drag it down more. And it's just a really beautiful flow. I also can go up and I would highly recommend downloading this because it just makes the video look so much smoother, as I said, rather than doing it manually. Then just now looking at the actual animation that I used here, then want to head to Higgsfield.ai and all I love the typewriter effect. I think it looks clean and it just works really nicely. You can also see that I am using sort of a Gaussian blur in the background here. And what I've essentially done is I've keyframed it. So the start of the keyframe here is zero. And then the next keyframe here is 60. And what that is doing is basically starting with no blur and then making it blurrier, 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 blurrier. It kind of stops for a bit. It holds that blur. And then as the text fades away, so does the blur. And that just makes the sort of visual on screen a lot more prominent and easier to read. Because if I show you this without the blur, I'm just gonna show you. You then wanna head to Higgsfield. You can see now that's really difficult to, to read compared to the blur being on like this. And I just think it's uh, really important to make sure you use Gaussian blurs effectively to help people sort of see what you want them to see. I also created this typewriter effect using uh, this uh, Premiere Pro extension I've got called uh, Premiere Composer or, or Mr. Horse. Uh, there's a free version and paid version. I would highly recommend this if you use Premiere Pro. There are like so many like effects, animations, backgrounds, typography, hand-drawn stuff. I think it's around $20 a month, which you might not want to pay. The free version has got basically a reduced number of assets, um, but there's shape elements in here, there's transitions. There is like, if you edit a lot and you use animations quite often, this is well worth it. It is the best plugin for Premiere Pro. The assets are super clean, customizable. Uh, there's also sound effects in there. I would highly recommend checking this out. I'll put a link in the description for you to be able to uh, see it. And then now moving on to the actual uh, screen recordings and sort of animations and zoom ins. What you do is upload your image of your first object and then upload your image of your second object into the end frame and then you just select one of the visual effects from the library. So I'm just going to talk about sort of how I'm doing these sort of zooms and, and why I'm doing them. So the reason I do these is just to highlight exactly what I'm showing in the video and make it clearer. This is all timed very very specifically with keyframing up here. I also have a special uh, layout that I use. Uh, you can create custom layouts in Premiere Pro. I use one called keyframing. What that does, it just gets rid of all of the other um, like menus just so that I've got a really big space to work with. And so as you can see, when I move into this and all you do uh, next uh, image, we've got the animation happening straight away there. And I'm trying to show exactly what I'm saying, which is essentially uploading the image here into the uh, first frame. The way that I actually do this is that, I'll just delete all of these just to show you, is that I'll start with the sort of page, sort of blown up in the correct uh, format. I'll then create two initial keyframes here under position and scale. And then I'll find the point where I want to sort of match with what I'm saying. All you do is upload your image of your first object. So I know upload my image of the first object is probably going to be in and around here. So what I like to do, and you can do this in different ways, is just keyframe there. And then what I'll do is I'll go over to here and I'll just start basically positioning this. I'll put my I'll put my guidelines on and I'll try and make sure that it's roughly in the middle here. And I'll just check whether I like that. All you let me take these guidelines off for you. All you do is upload your image of your first object and then upload your image of your second object into the end frame. And I say, yeah, I'm happy with that to the end frame. And then you just select one of the visual effects. And now I'm moving on to the sec second section, an object into the end frame. And then you just select. And so I'm thinking, okay, when I say, and then I'm moving on to the next section. So I'm gonna add another keyframe here. And then you just select one of the visual effects. And so select one of the visual, I probably wanna show it about there. So I'm gonna, again, add some keyframes, go into where I wanted to show it. And I just sort of did a very specific mouse movement here, uh, put my guidelines back on just to make sure it's there. And then I will just double check the, the timing here. And then you just select one of the visual effects from the library. I'm pretty happy Frame. with that. And then you just select one of the visual effects from the library. I would like to make that a little bit slower, I think. Not so much, but just a little bit. 
and then you just select one of the visual effects from the light. Can you see, it's a very subtle difference there, but you can see just as select one of the visual effects from the library. It just is, is timed to perfection rather than, let's say I made that quicker and then you just select one of the visual. See, that's just too quick for me because the, the animation sped in before I actually move the mouse here. And I do my screen recordings where I specifically move the mouse in a very slow, sort of consistent flow when I'm about to show me clicking something. So if I just play that again for you, and then you just select one of the visuals, that's just not the right timing. So again, I just adjust that and you'll see that it's very slight differences. And then you just select one of the visual effects from the left. Still think that's a bit too quick and then you just select one of the visual effects from the light. Nice. And so I'm trying to not hang on the visual for too long. I don't need to. And then for this next section, I just want to move uh, back up to the top. I, in the original video, didn't feel like a zoom felt right for this. So instead, what I did was I you create a keyframe and then you move along one and then you create another keyframe and then what I'm gonna do is just um, move this up, reposition it. You then repeat this. That needs to be sped up a little bit. I need to get the timing right here on the change of the page. So it's there, I'm just moving that. You then repeat this process for each transition. And there we go. I could have done the zoom there instead. So what I could have done from the library, I could have gone keyframe you then repeat this keyframe and instead did a transition across here you then repeat this process for each transition but i just didn't quite like that i preferred switching right to it and i would just point out all of these things on their own don't make a huge amount of difference but when you combine all of them together and just have the timing perfected with you sort of making a mouse movement or doing something on the screen like me sort of dragging the photos on and it just being timed correctly adding it all together with all of the animations is what makes the video flow and just feel nice and i'll just show you a little bit of a different way that i could have done one of these as well so for this section here where i and then you just select one of the visual effects from go across like that one thing i could have done to make it a little bit more fancier is actually add a keyframe in here um, and zoom it out a little bit. This will just create a little bit of a, a motion away and then a motion in, and it does kind of uh, look, um, you say better, but just slightly different. I'm just gonna play that for you, see if I've got it first time. And then you just select one of the visual effects from the light. So I actually would have preferred that to have come out a little bit. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit and move this up and that should be all good. And then you just select one of the visual effects. And then you just select one of the, I actually think that should be a bit slower. And then you just select one of the visual effects from, you can go slower there. And then you just select one of the visual effects from the, and there we go. You might say that looks better, you might say that looks worse, but just a different way of just going, instead of going just straight across, it goes back out and then back in, which is just another way of, of creating the animation. I'm also gonna show you a slightly different way of doing the uh, first animation as well now. All you do is upload your image of your first object and then upload your image of your second object into the end frame. So you can see there, I did one zoom in and because these things are in the middle and they're quite close to each other, I didn't feel the need to zoom into one and then zoom into another. But I'm just gonna show you what it would look like if I did it slightly differently. So I'm gonna just find the point where I want to uh, zoom in, which is here. And I'm actually gonna zoom in slightly to the, the left side here. So what we're gonna do is gonna do this. All you do is upload your image of your first object. So that's nicely timed there. I might just delay that a little bit um, and also just move it up slightly. All you do is upload your image of your first object and see where it's just so nicely. Let me just show if it's not nicely timed right here, if it's too quick. All you do is upload your image of your first object and then upload. Can you see? It's very subtle, but now just look at this. All you do is upload your image of your first object and then up. It, it's, it's very subtle with the timing and the words and, and the sequence of the stuff showing, but it just adds to the flow. And then what I'm gonna do here is then just create a little animation that moves across. So 
So, so we go of your first object and then upload your image of your second object. So that actually, I actually want to move. The thing is, is that I want the middle of of that can you see right image of your first object so that's and there then upload your image of yourself you see how that's not there your eyes would have been looking basically um in this section and because and then upload your image of your now i'm looking here i'm not looking there so the way that i will combat that is i'll just put a guide here right that's where i want it to be then upload your image of your and i'm just going to make that section just come over a little bit here let me just show you how just that just a little looks a little bit nicer of your first object and then upload your image of your second object into the end frame and then you just select there we go and so yeah very nitpicky there but this is how i edit my animations and when you sort of get better at um keyframing and doing zooms in and and getting better at timing stuff this will just become a lot easier and it will just make your videos feel a hell of a lot smoother and just flow really nicely and then Last but not least, uh, I've had some people comment on like how I've got this sort of blend effect uh, from my uh, my talking head into the uh, sort of top. You can see there's kind of like a fade there. And all I do uh, for this is I just use a, a, a mask. So what I do is I create like a rectangle mask and then I, I add a, a bit of a feather and a bit of a mask expansion. So let me just uh turn one of these off because i actually have two of them on and so if you just look at the video sort of now you can see there is a just a, a really hard line here and i just don't think that looks as good um i used to have it like that and then i just thought why don't i just add a bit of a feather a bit of a sort of expansion and then you can sort of play around with it here so this is the top of the video here you can play around with it, it doesn't matter where it goes exactly but this is now just creating a little bit of a fade from my video at one of the videos to the top. And I think it looks really nice and you can apply that to all sorts of different assets. And so, yeah, that is the video wrapped up. I hope that like that was kind of insightful into how I do all of my keyframing and animation and zooms. And it's given you some sort of things to think about with your own content when it comes to sort of showing the right thing at the right time and sort of correctly visually placing it and formatting your screen recordings properly so they look nice in the short form uh, aspect ratio. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.